Holly, thoughts yeah. on the Million Dollar Man suit? Um, very sparkly. I thought it was great. I mean, I like that he gets out of it to wrestle because I did think, how is he going to do this? It's actually but, a strip tease. And yeah, <laughs> exactly. Da, da, da. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> Holly, do oh. you know how the Million Dollar Man gimmick was created? Story down. So the Million Dollar Man, there's a couple stories out there. I think... You could probably say that maybe it's a little bit of both. Mm. But Vince McMahon's version of why he created this character is because he's from is it Greenwich, Connecticut, and he wants that community or that area that he lives in is very snobby. He, being a wrestling promoter, feels like that community looked down upon him for what he did. It wasn't they made their money from, you know, I assume stock markets, big business that wasn't this carny bullshit that pro wrestling is. Gosh. So he felt like that community looked down at him. So he wanted to create a character that was a mockery of those type of people oh, that would look down at those around him. Very much what the Million Dollar Man did. The Million Dollar Man had to live the life as well. Of course. So he had the, obviously the Million Dollar title that we see, not here, but we see it at a later date. The suits, he would always travel by limo, etc, etc. And I think a lot of this was paid for obviously on the company dime, so that he was always living up to the reputation right, of the character. Okay. The other prevailing theory is that there was a little bit to do with ted turner now ted turner was the head tycoon at tbs mm -hmm. which was a broadcast station they were the ones that basically brought wcw to be a competitor oh, okay. of the wwf uncoincidentally the million dollar man is named ted oh. so they think that there's some some truth to that obviously the wcw wasn't at the same point mm -hmm in 1988 as they became in 95 when they were competing directly with WWF but it may be no smoke without fire in this okay. instance but that's how the character came to Interesting. be I really like the suit I thought it worked with the character yes it does I prefer the black suit if I'm being honest mm -hmm. but this one made a nice change because yeah. I was expecting a black suit Ooh, okay. next we see a package about how the WWF title became vacant mm. Ted DiBiase tried to buy the gold from Hogan who said hell no mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> No! <laughs> DBRC then paid off Andre to win it for him. Mm -hmm. Andre called it the World World Wrestling Federation. I think that's the throwback to when he worked for Vince Senior because it was the World Wide Wrestling yes. Federation. I think he, he flubbed it a little bit there. We see Andre pin Hogan, who had his shoulder off the canvas. Mm. Do you know, actually, speaking of this whole event and... Andre winning the match, but not winning the match, and then giving the title to DBRC. Uh -huh. Do you know another key thing that happened during that main event? Absolutely not. So have you heard of the ref, Earl Hebner? Yeah. So in this era, we see a lot of his brother, Dave Hebner. So Dave mm -hmm. is the older Hebner, but they look quite a lot alike. They literally they? look identical. I'm glad you said that. Oh. So in the main event with Andre and Hogan, yeah. the referee on the night is supposed to be Dave Hebner. So Dave Hebner counts the one, two, we see Hogan's shoulder come up, yes. three, end of the match. After all the dramas happen, Hogan is getting really confused. We see a referee run to the ring. He looks exactly like the ref that's in the ring. What's going on here? Hogan sees the refs arguing between each other, grabs both of them because he doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Turns out Ted DiBiase paid a ref to get plastic surgery to look exactly like Dave Hebner and then they put the real Deb, Dave Hebner in a locker so he couldn't come out and actually ref the match. So the referee had been bought off by Ted DiBiase, which was the whole part of this controversy that led us to this tournament tonight. Realistically, it's, it was just Earl Hebner doing the thing, yeah. obviously. But that's the story that they concocted Jesus for this. Jesus Christ. Oh, I do love these fucking weird stories. It's ludicrous, it's isn't it? It's so funny. It's great. It's so funny. But I thought that was a, an interesting so, little factoid that, that you'd you. like. Thank you. Well, imagine that. Oh, yeah, we paid someone to get plastic surgery. And we're supposed to go, yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah, 100% I believe that. Is, that is funny. That is funny. 